who had, who had travelled on the train to, uh, to the start. The stories keep coming out, um, and uh, it really was an amazing performance from everybody, and so delighted. Um, you know, they, they, David's story itself is a, is a fairy tale, and a uh, great, great new champion to the Women's Army. Women's World Record is where do you start? It's amazing. <coughs> where do you start on yesterday? How do you top that next year? Uh, we have already started having conversations about how that might happen. Uh, we're not here to talk about next year. Um, we're here to celebrate um, what was truly a, a, a stunning day. Um, so, uh, yeah, I couldn't be more proud of, uh, of what the team did um, and what the runners uh, alongside me did in terms of their performance, their preparation. Um, just, yeah, really, really proud. The partnership with um, Abbott um, for this series of six races, it was seven races if you take the fact that this is the start this weekend of Series 11 and London next year will be the end of Series 11. I like the way that sort of bookends it and then obviously enables the moving on of the opening race in the following cycle. Abbott have been incredibly important because of the finance they've put in, but the initiative like um, this year, each winner, each champion was uh, given $10,000 to choose to donate to a charity of their choice here in London. So $40,000, that's going to be the case of each World Marathon Major in the series. Seven, that's $280,000 from Abbott going towards charities of various choices from the different athletes. And I understand each race can decide the way, the method of that money being distributed yes. with the, to the charities. That's just one minor aspect of Abbott's involvement. It, it, it is, and I don't want to pick out one charity, but I'm now, now, now going to. Um, uh, so, um, uh, I mean, obviously there's the Weir Archer Academy, um, so uh, um, has done an enormous amount in improving, in improving wheelchair racing through, throughout um, this. The Daniels charity that he, he chose, I had never heard of um, until uh, today. And, um, that's, that's the Gathimba Edwards Foundation. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it is about uh, young uh, Kenyan children who do not have um, uh, very much and how to really in, um, sort of inspire their life story. And uh, it comes from a meeting of two runners. It comes from a meeting of a, uh, at a mile race at a British runner that went to Kenya and a Kenyan runner that was running in Britain. And it's stories like that, that that actually when you go into it, that's that's what the London Marathon is all about. It's about you know charity, it's about giving, it's about togetherness. Um, and you know, there was a backdrop yesterday of some of the biggest security fears that we as an event have had to deal with. Um, but but what everyone can see is the togetherness that comes from marathon running and the people that do it. It is such a unique sport in doing that. The everyday people lining up on the start line against the gods of the sport. Um, they all understand how hard and difficult 26.2 miles is and they are there to help each other um, in spirit, in actions um, and, and yesterday absolutely showed it. I mean, Ma Manuel Achard's foundation, for the record, is Right to Play. That's her choice, rather, her charity. And Mary, you've chosen, um, uh, Daniel, you've chosen to Save the Children. Mary, the Kathimba. It was very yeah. Um, but the charity element is what makes London unique, amongst one or two other things. But it's probably, for 40,000 watching, for much of the TV coverage, the main thing that makes it stand out. Yeah, I mean, uh, this year, obviously, our official charity of the year was Heads Together and the campaign of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Prince Harry and having them there on the day at the start. Um, you know, people didn't know that they were going to be at a Buxton water station at mile 22. There was a cheering point going on at mile 6. Um, they were there giving medals at the finish line. All of this is going on um, in, the, in, in the background and actually probably at the start no, very few people had an understanding of the huge logistical operation that was going on to make that make that happen. On top of the fact that 40,000 runners happened to be going past 650,000 bottles of water being given out, a quarter of a million bottles of Lucas A. It, it truly is a, um, an amazing event um, that, as I say, just gets people together. And um, I am certain we will have beaten the world record for charity one day fundraising. I mean, the world record 
was 59.4 million. I am certain we will go over 60 million pounds raised for charity uh, yesterday, which will take us to over 800, 890 million pounds since my father and John Disley um, founded this event in, in 1981. And, I mean, 890 million pounds for charity, that is just an unbelievable figure. David, <clears throat> the $10,000 that has, you've chosen to have go to the Weir Archer Academy seems like small beer in comparison. But actually, that sort of funding for small organizations is absolutely critical. And you must be really proud that you can carry on and continue assisting this legacy of your foundation. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, I had the idea back in 2008. I was at Beijing and I was in the you know, at the warm-up track, getting ready for, for my racing, and um, I sat there and saw the, the, the GB wheelchair racing squad, and there was um, seven of us. And then I saw lots of teams coming in, you know, some of the teams that don't get any money, you know, like Thailand and, and, and small countries, and they have like 10, 12 wheelchair races. So I sat there and, and, and thought, well, there's something going wrong. If you just told me, backstage after your fabulous win yesterday. Um, when you woke up this morning, what was the first thing in your mind? Yes, uh, what I can say, after yesterday win, uh, first I talked with my family there in Kenya, and uh, they motivated me a lot, and also my friends, whom I train with there in Kenya, where we train. So everybody in Kenya first was very happy, and also my friends from many years were very happy. And uh, after yesterday, Liz, I felt good tonight, so I was in good sleep tonight. So. And uh, in the morning, after waking up, and uh, I was someone of us what will happen uh, when I go back to Kenya. So that uh, that was the thing which came in my mind in the morning, and I was to call the wife in Kenya, and she told me that uh, everything will be okay. So we are waiting you here. Home, so if you come, we'll do a celebration normally. What, what will the celebration be? Lots of family and friends coming to the house? Or? Yes, it happened like this. Uh, my friends, my training mates. So I will try to invite them and uh, we, so that we can encourage each other in learning and doing other things uh, like that. Is it, is it one of these situations where you will invite 100 people and 500 will, will turn up? <laughs> no, you know, in Kenya, it, it can happen like this. Like now, maybe they can be waiting for me in, in the airport so because, of, because of the celebration of my winning here. So I expect anything to happen in Kenya, so, and I will be very happy for that. So you don't know what to expect when you land, when you get off the plane? Yes, uh, in my mind, uh, <coughs> something is coming, but uh, I'm not sure of, uh, but I expect something good in Kenya, so everything can happen, I can say. And <clears throat> what will you do now? I mean, did you, do you plan a holiday with the family? Do you just go back and have a very quiet week at home before training again? Yes. Uh, after this list, I try to have a rest for some days or, or one week or I will plan and uh, then I will try to come back in training uh, to, to feel the body the way it will respond and then from there I will try to plan my next list. <clears throat> Speaking about your, your racing, let's look, talk about yesterday for a little while. I thought you ran a spectacularly intelligent race, you kicked hard over that last 10k, you eased away, and then when you were in trouble it looked like we all thought, we were all convinced that um, uh, Kennedy would catch you. He, he got within six seconds near Big Ben, and you had a couple of looks around, 
and you accelerated and he never got a sniff, he never got close. That must have been very, very, a, a little worrying for you, but it must have been very satisfying when you realised he was not going to close the gap. Yeah, to me, I was expecting anybody can come from behind, so I am well prepared uh, because uh, when we were starting the race, I had uh, good confidence, even uh, during starting. And during the race, I tried to control my feelings in the race, so I was, I was concentrating in the course and uh, to feel the way I do there after because the pace in the starting was very high so I knew in my mind that uh, after half after crossing half the half of the race anything can happen there when uh, marathon it's not like half marathon or 10k as you proceed to the finish anything can happen uh, anybody can get tired and uh, you can be overtook by everybody. So I, I had to plan well to how to do my race. Yeah, I was aware that anybody can come, so I had to look behind the bed so that I can have a plan the way I can finish my race yesterday. Yes. Well, it was brilliantly thought out and brilliantly executed, Daniel, so congratulations. Um, Mary. Yours wasn't really a race, it was more of a time trial. You know, uh, I think after the first uh, few hundred metres, you hardly saw anybody else, did you? It was a very, very brave effort, and I think many, many people who know the sport thought you had overcooked it, you'd gone out a little too hard, especially when we saw that halfway time under 67 minutes, which in itself is kind of a world record during a marathon. Um, but you again, you ran so strongly, so bravely. Um, do you think there's more to come? Um, I think, uh, first of all, I want to say again thank you to uh, the race uh, director and all the staff for New York London Marathon for well, inviting me for, to come to London to race. And really, I didn't, I didn't want to uh, discourage uh, you like last year when I fell down. So at least I prepare myself, uh, myself well in order not to uh, disappoint anybody. So also my family. So. Um, I was ready for anything yesterday because uh, I knew I trained well and I knew again uh, I can run a good time uh, despite my colleague not following me. I, uh, I say uh, if the pace member uh, is with me, I will follow. Uh, despite the fact that the pace at first was um, a little bit crazy and I say, okay, uh, let me just go. So, uh, let me just go. So long as I'm just feeling my fatigue, so long as I'm feeling my body, and um, I say, okay, if I'm going at this pace, maybe when I will be at halfway, I will be losing. So, uh, in any case, let me just go like this, and uh, I will see how I will um, uh, 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 go the how I will do the last part. I mean, the halfway. And I just, uh, I put in my mind that if somebody was coming uh, to cut me behind, I was ready with the tactics because I was really ready for, uh, for, for, for yesterday's event. Because uh, what happened last year, I didn't want to happen it again. So, um, so I so was your, excited. <clears throat> your motivations, your, your reason for running that way was partly the fall last year when there was a group. Yeah. Presumably, the frustration and disappointment of not being selected for Rio was also giving you a bit of extra motivation. Yeah. But I saw you talking to um, Caroline, the pacemaker, in the first half. What, what were you saying to her? Were you saying faster, faster, or we're both nuts, we're going too fast, or what were you saying? Okay, uh, when I was talking to Caroline, first of all, I was asking her to, uh, I talk 
uh, to her hand and before even now because I was uh, worried she never pick any water at the stations so I told uh, Caroline uh, maybe you can take water she said I'm okay and then uh, after halfway um, I was telling I was asking her how she feels so she was saying maybe can I stop I told her uh, maybe if you still have a, a little energy we, we can still uh, go with you and then at 14 mile, uh, it was dropping. So uh, for her, we did a good job. Uh, although it was uh, fast for her to run half marathon like that, but uh, I really appreciate it. I thank her so much. And again, I, I said, okay, because I've just remained alone, let me just uh, focus. Um, also listen to my body and fatigue, and I was okay to work. Mary, you're, you're more than 10 years older than Daniel. <clears throat> Your trophy cabinet at home must be getting a little big, a little swelling. Uh, maybe you've got shells that are collapsing under the weight of the trophies. It's, it must be a very familiar scenario to you now. You get back to Kenya, you've won New York, you've won London. This has been happening, it's becoming a habit. What will be the, the celebration for you, or is there a well-practiced routine? You know, you have the same people over the same party again and again. What are you gonna do when you get home? Um, okay, um, I will start by, uh, I will not go directly home, I will go to uh, Italy first, I will go to Germany, to our company, Validas, and after that I will go back home, so uh, at least we are, um, people at home are ready to receive us well, and we have just told uh, the day when we are arriving, and I think they will be ready to receive us. And also, obviously, I think uh, we will be having a celebration at home with, my, uh, with our family members. And also, a lot of media at the airport uh, on, on the arrival. So, I think uh, it will be uh, very great. And all your friends and family at home, they watched the race on TV, they saw it happening yesterday. <coughs> Yeah, uh, most of them they never went to church yesterday uh, because they, they knew I was competing. So they were in the screen throughout, asking more time, more time, and it will be started at what time. So uh, it was really amazing because after when uh, we crossed the line, uh, they were having a, a meeting immediately after, after the race, how they can receive us. Maybe they thought they will be arriving because normally when we go to a race, we travel on Monday back home, Tuesday, Wednesday we are there. So it was thinking that maybe uh, Tuesday or Wednesday we will be there already. So and we told them we still have some uh, couple of days here in, uh, in Europe and we will come later. So they're all watching on TV back in Kenya and when you win they'll go, great, another party around the Mary's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll open it up to questions. Anybody got any uh, questions for David or Daniel or Mary, or indeed Hugh as well? Yeah, Larry. Mary, congratulations on the... Larry, my apologies. <clears throat> congratulations on the world best yesterday. But I, I recall there was a question we were asking you yesterday in the press conference, and we asked if you thought you could run faster than 217. How do you feel about that today? I feel good. It is also great uh, to run uh, such a time because I was having two in that seconds. Uh, now I've just low and also I've come uh, to a water holder. So at least uh, I have just spent how uh, a water can taste. But you, you are keeping an open mind on how much faster you can go. You know, a lot of people, of course, now are talking about Paula's.